Today, I'm going to be showing you a completely free method of being able to scrape thousands of targeted leads from LinkedIn. Now, there is a ton of different ways to scrape leads, but all of them require monthly subscriptions. So this method I'm about to be breaking down is completely free and will allow you to extract a thousand leads every single day. And then this will actually generate the personalized message to send to them. So as always, if you'd like to get the template for this build, then you can get it in my community. Link is down below in the description. So go ahead and go check that out. Now, before we start getting into the tutorial and breaking this down step by step and how you can build this out for yourself, what I want to do is always, I just wanted to show you guys a demo. So showcase some of the results that this can generate, what it looks like and all that good stuff. Really quick, we're just going to open up this Google search note and show you guys the specific use case. Hypothetically, let's just say we are an agency and our target customer or the target lead that we're trying to reach out to are accountants. So what I'm going to be trying to find is CEOs of accounting firms. So we can even be a little bit more specific. We could say accounting firm, something like that, but we're just gonna keep this relatively broad for the time being and just say accounting. Now, before we dive into anything too specific and show you guys all this different stuff and explaining all of it, let's just test the workflow really quick, show you guys what happens. So right away, it's going to test the workflow. It's going to run through this Google search API. So it's just using Google APIs. We can find this from the Google Cloud Console. I'll show you guys all this stuff. So don't worry if I sound like I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to go down two different routes. So one, we're just using a code node to say, okay, well, I need you to look at this Google search. I need you to take all the results that we just generated from right here. We're going to take all of this and then we're going to pass this into the code node to say, hey, just generate all the different results, break it down into the name, break it down into position, give me the link about section of them, all that good stuff. Once we do that, it's going to go into Google Sheets. It's going to just append new rows and update my sheet. So if I show you guys really quick, we have this LinkedIn so we could see all the different names, all that stuff but we don't have the about section or the outreach message filled out yet. That's going to be filled in in just a second. So we do have this research agent. It's going to be using perplexity. So we're using the Sonar Pro. And what we're doing is based off of the information that we found earlier, it's just going to say, okay, based off of all of this, I want you to search more information on them. I want you to find articles. I want you to find as much information as possible because you should know that personalization really separates the wheat from the chaff when it comes to selling your services and pitching your services or products to different people. So that's what we're doing right here. You can see it takes just a second because it is running through 10 different leads. So we can see right here, there's 10 leads. Of course, this is just the first page. It's going to run through, I believe 10 other pages is what we set and you could change it to be whatever you want, but I figure that 10 pages is probably the limit that we should keep it to because I will preface that you can only have about a thousand searches per day. So you could do a hundred searches actually, but each search brings about 10 results. So that brings you to a thousand leads every single day. So that's what you get from this free plan. Anything besides that, you'll just have to look at different plans where you're going to be paying for stuff. Once we do this research agent, it's going to go to the outreach agent, which is just going to create some sort of personalized first line. And then it's just going to update all of that into our sheets. So we can see right here, it says, hey, Paul, hey, Marie, hey, Alexis. So if we look at one of these, it says, how do you create a balance between execution leadership and acknowledging the contributions of your team at KPMG? So that's pretty specific. We could find another one like, uh, hey, Deanne, how was your experience at Arizona State influenced? your leadership style in the accounting and finance sector. So you could change this however you want. The point being is that we're taking the about section and creating some sort of personalized first line. I always implore you guys to, you know, make this more personalized for yourself, make it more personalized for your agency, inserting your own lines, because, you know, I can't write the best lines for you and your company. I can only make guesses as to what's going to work in your specific industry. But in any case, it's going to run through all of these. So that was just the first page that it generated. Now it is doing the second page and it's just gonna keep on doing this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pause this really quick because I don't want to run through a bunch of leads that I'm not going to be using and waste any of my searches. You will then see once it finishes this, it's going to go down a different route at the bottom. So what this is, is is first doing some sort of pagination. So if I open this up, it's just going to say continue loop or start index. So once it finishes this, it's going to go through the pages check. It's just going to see, all right, is there any more searches that we have to go through? If there's not, then we're just going to finish. If there is, we're going to keep on searching. But in any case, this looks like, so we are getting the name, we're getting the position, we're getting the profile URL, and even the about section. So how do we actually build this out? Well, stick around because I'm about to show you step by step. Also, if you just want to get the template, it's in my community. So feel free to 
just do that as well. But first things first, we're going to have to set up some sort of credentials. The credentials we have to use for this specific build, we're using Google search and we are also using Perplexity's Sonar Pro. So those are the two different APIs we're going to be using. They're completely free. Maybe you'll have to add five bucks on Perplexity, but you know, it's costs are so minimal. It's not really going to make much of a difference. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to come into the Google Cloud console, search that up. Once we come into here, what I'm going to be doing is first you'll want to create a project if you haven't created one already. If you're using N99, you know, I guarantee you already have this set up. So Let's go to our APIs and services. Let's go to enabled APIs and services. We will have to actually find our credentials. So if we go down here, we can find our credentials. So I have a couple different things. We have API keys and we have the OAuth. What we're going to be focusing on is the API keys. What you will want to do is just go to create credentials, go to API key. It's going to create a brand new one for you. You'll just copy whatever it generates. I don't want to show off my key. Well, now I have to delete this now because it did show it. So let's just delete that really quick. Delete API key. Make sure none of you guys are stealing my credentials. So let's just delete that really quick. Now, once you take this, we are going to search up custom search. I believe it might have Google. All right, now there it is. Custom search API. That is exactly what we need. So usually it'll say enable. So you'll just want to make sure it's to enable that. Now, that's one of the hardest parts. So what we can do next is just come back into N8N. Make sure you hold on to that API key. What we're doing right here is we're just adding a set fields. So we just need the current start index, and this is going to let us know what the page is going to start on. So we always, when we're testing out this workflow, we always wanted to start on just the first page. Next up, we're going to be adding an HTTP node. So how you can do that, put an HTTP request. Really quick before I add any of that, let me show you what we're actually going to be adding to it. So we're going to be using a get method within the API endpoints. We're going to be using www.googleapis.com slash custom search slash v1 the authentication you can just leave that off because you can put your api key here or if you'd like you can go to generic credential type let's see if they even have custom search i doubt that they do but it's worth checking out yeah it doesn't look like they do unfortunately google custom yeah they don't have it all right so we can leave this off and we're just going to put our api key here instead so if we scroll down we just type in key Below that, within the value, we are actually inputting our API key. So what you copied from earlier in your Google Cloud Console, that is what you're going to be inputting into here. So if I back up a little bit, let's go back to here. Now the CX is going to be from something called Programmable Search Engine. And if I open this up really quick, just go to Programmable Search Engine dot google dot com slash control panel slash create again you could find all this with the links in the description we don't have to enter anything in the search engine name we could uh just call it n8n and you know leave it as that we will have to enable the search the entire web just instead of searching specific sites or pages we'll click i'm not a robot now we will just click on create so it's going to write out this custom script for us now what we need is this cx code so v66 that is exactly what we're looking for so copy exactly that come back into n8n and just paste whatever you find now the queue this is going to be the value of what we want to actually enter into our google search so we can see right here, we are trying to search CEOs of accounting or accountants in United States. And here's the site that we actually want to search. So linkedin.com slash I N. Now you can do the same thing for Instagram. I would have to find out exactly what it would be specifically, but it would probably just be I N something like that. Nothing too crazy. Next up, what we're going to be doing is have the name of a start index. So this is just going to let us know what page we're going to be starting on. So at first, you know, this is coming from the set fields right here. So we're just going to include this as one. And this is just going to let us know what page we have to be running the search on. So whether it's the first page, second page, third page. So this doesn't make sense. It might make sense at the end while I'm explaining how we're actually paginating through everything. But okay, that's how we do the Google search. Next up, we're going to run through a results code node. So right here, it's not anything too crazy. All we're doing is basically just combining everything that we are receiving. So this entire list, this is the output of what we were generating. So if I actually run this just once, let's actually close this out. Let's uh, run it from the beginning. So if I run through this, we can see that it's a very long list. It goes on for 
quite some time. We just want to clean it up a little bit. So you can use ChatGPT for this, or you can just use a code node like I did. It's going to be cheaper. You know, you don't have to run through more API searches or API calls, I should say. What I'm saying is I need you to combine all this information. I want you to put the results into title. I want you to put it in about profile URL, all that good stuff. So we could see the name, position, the link, about section, image, start index, and has more results. So we need the has more results because that's letting us know that there's going to be another result after this, you know. So let's say there's a hundred results on the pages or on your page and we just pull up the first one. So it says Nick Peruski. Now what we're asking the system is we're basically asking, okay, well, is there anything after this or is it is it finished? Because we need to know if we need to finish the system and run through a different route or not. Okay. So once we get this, we're then going to break this up into two different routes. So first, it's going to add what we just found into Google Sheets. So what we're doing right here is, okay, well, I have to actually fix this up. So let's put the title. I'm not sure why that was off. And let's do the about section. So that would explain why we didn't have the columns over here filled in. Okay, so let's go back to edit on. We have the about and let's just drag that in. So our reach message, we can leave blank for the time being. So we're not doing anything too out here. Within here, we're just doing an append row. If you don't know how to find that, go to add node. You go to Sheets, and we can just go to Append or Update Row in Google Sheets. Simple as that. So for the name, we're just dragging and dropping everything as you already saw. Selecting the right documents and the right sheets. So down here, it's just called Sheet 1. So we're just reflecting that in our node. Nothing that we should be spending a lot of time on. Let's now go to the next node, which is the Research Agent. So the biggest thing right here that you should know is we're using Open Router. Now this is completely up to you if you want to do more in-depth research you can leave this out if you would like but i think it's pretty important to include personalized first lines in outreach messages so we are using open router and open router is basically a marketplace where we can just have access to all these different models so we can see we have grok we have quen we have perplexity we have never sleep which i've never even heard of we have mistral we have google's gemini Anthropic, you get the point. We have pretty much everything on here that you can need. Okay, so if you want to actually set this up, we're just going to go to openrouter.ai. I already have my account created. If you don't have one, just sign up for a completely free account. You know, you might have to add $5 to this account, like I mentioned, but expenses are very minimal. Once we log on to here, we'll just go to keys. You will create a brand new key. So I added $5 and that was probably a couple months ago. So you can see that the costs are always kept to a minimum, unless you're doing crazy amount of searches every single day, which you might be, but you'll just want to create your API key and then you can paste that into open router. You'll just go into the credential, put your API key right here. It's that simple. Okay, so we're going to be using Perplexity Sonar Pro and this will allow us to do real-time research on the web. Now in the agent, what we're doing is we're passing the information from the Google Sheets. So if I go to add to Google Sheet, you know, it's gonna generate all these different ones for me. Okay, now we have more. So if we come back into here, I'm actually going to pause this workflow. I don't want it to generate all these. We're just grabbing the name. Now what we have to do, something that's super annoying, is we have to grab the results from everything. So we can't just type json.output. See, it's coming up as undefined for some reason. So that's the one annoying thing with N8N is it, it can be tough or just a little bit frustrating to map these nodes properly. So what we do is we just do the double curly brackets. We do results, making sure that we're getting the results from here. And then we're just grabbing all item index json.name. So make sure to follow the structure if you're getting undefined outputs from any of your references. Now let's open this up a little bit and let's just see what we are saying in our and our prompt. It's not anything too crazy. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this, but again, I really do implore you guys to write this one for yourself. So we say your job is to research this person as much as possible. The goal is to find information about them to eventually write a sales pitch to them. We need this information on them to create a personalized line. You are to find articles, LinkedIn posts, and whatever else that can be helpful in creating icebreaker lines for our outreach message to this individual. Do not include any intros or conclusions in your output. You must also include where you found the information from, whether that was a LinkedIn post, article from whatever, et cetera. So again, it's nothing too crazy. But what we do next is we pass this information into our outreach agent so that it has access to all this about information. So in here, we're just using gpt 4 l The prompt is your job is to create a personalized line slash icebreaker for each profile. It should come off as genuine, not corny. 
Often it is great to ask a question, but do not force it. We do not just want to repeat what we see in the profile as that is generic and robotic. Make it relatable if you can and try to pull from something similar that can relate even if you have to fabricate it. Although it needs to be realistic, you must not be too specific about asking about locations or anything and try to focus it on business or achievements or posts as much as possible. Keep the icebreaker just one line and use business casual style format. Also, do not include any introductions or conclusions in your output. You were to start with, hey name, then enter the icebreaker about uh, the person. So usually what you will do is you can usually say, and I've just left this out for the time being, obviously, you'll want to insert your agency, what you do, and probably also how you can help, something like that. I left this part out because it's going to be totally specific to your own company and it's going to be different for everybody. So there is much point for me to add it. Again, we're just providing it with the credentials or the context, I should say, instead. So we're just providing the name, the position, and the about section. Now, once this finishes up, it's automatically going to go down this bottom route. So this is what we call pagination, and it's just going to flip through to the next pages. And I mean, this is essentially what makes the loop work in any end. And I mean, without it, you would just keep scraping page one over and over again. So this code, it is used to keep track of which page we are on and decide if we should load onto the next page. So it looks at the results that we just got back and specifically, it's going to grab the first item and check if there's info about the next page. So we can see from all of these different results and all that, that's what we're giving it. Uh, the input, it's going to come back with something like continue loop and start index. So if there is a next page, it's going to grab the number that we need to start from, like 11, 21, 31. Also, on top of that, it just checks if we should keep going. So Google tells us whether there's more pages that are available. And again, it sends that information forward. It's then going to return a package, you know, just saying continue loop, start index. So with this, with this code node and again you could just use ChatGPT for something like this if you would like you just have to make sure that you're providing it with all these different inputs which can be uh quite annoying to figure out instead it's just easier to write the code for it or have ChatGPT write the code for it or whatever llm you're using so with this what we're doing is a pages check and this is essentially just the last thing that we have to do and this pages check it's just going to say okay well does it say continue loop or does it not if it does say continue loop, then I want you to run back to this Google search and I want you to do the next page. But we have to make sure we know what page we are going to be starting on. So that's why we use this start index right here. So this is what I was referencing before, saying if you feel confused about this part, don't worry. So the start index, we could see it's 41. So this means we are going to be starting on this right here. So I'm not too sure if that's exactly right. But in any case, the biggest thing right here is that it says continue loop. If it's true, yeah, then continue it, go to this route. If it's false, then it's just going to do nothing. So I suppose we can write out a no operation, do nothing. But yeah, that's essentially what this system really looks like in its uh, granular approach. Again, I know I kind of speed through things pretty fast sometimes. So if you do feel confused, just please rewind. And also you can get this template down in my community. Link is in the description as well. But yeah, so I thought this would be a very useful workflow to you guys because, you know, monthly subscriptions, they do add up. You know, this is something we've all experienced spending over a thousand dollars on monthly subscriptions. It's pretty easy to get to that. Unfortunately, we aren't getting the email because there really isn't any ways to extract the email or the phone number unless we're using some sort of paid API, as far as I know, at least. But what I would like to do in the future is expand or expound on this automation, expand on the system, grab the email as well, and then automatically do the outreach to them. So I will have that video coming up very soon. Drop a like and a comment if you would like to receive it any quicker, just so I know what you guys are really looking for and what's going to be helping you guys out the most. But yeah, I really do hope you guys found some value in this video because I know a lot of you guys have issues where you can't afford all these subscriptions and it just stacks up so quickly, which I can definitely relate to. But yeah, of course, anyways, I appreciate you guys for watching this video. Please drop a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment. Let me know what you guys are interested in seeing. If you appreciate this type of content, if it's helping you guys out, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.